right so welcome to this video and i hope that you are doing great so in today's video we are going to talk about residual sum of squares now this is the parameter which is required to establish the methods linearity as a part of method validation so let us begin with the presentation how one can easily calculate residual sum of squares as a part of your methods linearity estimation so we know that as a part of a linearity study one has to understand the correlation coefficient y-intercept slope and residual sum of the squares now these three parameters the correlation coefficient y-intercept and slope can be established by using the excel sheet functions itself but the residual sum of squares may not so for that reason let us understand what is mean by first residual, residual sum of squares and let us assume that you have conducted a linearity experiment for your hplc method where the concentration is plotted against x axis and the peak area is plotted against y axis and these are the five different concentration levels level a b c d and e so what you observe that you know for concentration b the second concentration there is a deviation in the response by four units there is a deviation for the response by four units against the predicted response now whatever line you are seeing onto the graph is what is plotted in such a way that there will be a minimum deviation there will be a minimum deviation between the observed responses so what we observe that for point b the four unit is the observed deviation and this is nothing but the residual this is nothing but the residual so the residual for point number b is 4 and which is above the line by 4 units which is the above the line by 4 units so the vertical distance the vertical distance between your observed value and the predicted value is known as the residuals the second important point is you know if the deviation is above the line it is the plus deviation the plus residuals and if the deviation is below the line it is the minus deviation so let us understand uh, the residuals with the help of another data point and here in this case it is the concentration level c and if you look at the deviation you know is minus 2 the deviation for the observed response at concentration c is minus 2 below the line of regression so this is called as the negative residual deviation so we are going to understand what is the actual formula for the calculation of the residuals right and here it is so, so residuals is nothing but the difference between observed value and the predicted value i repeat once again the residuals is nothing but the difference between observed value and the predicted value so we are going to understand you know observed value is very much clear to know that whatever response we are getting on to the peak area is nothing but our observed value but how one can understand the predicted value and here is the solution for that so how to understand the predicted value and we all know that the equation of linear line the equation of linear line is what y is equal to mx plus c and in this case y is nothing but our predicted value m is the slope x is the response of our independent factor can be concentration uh, then c is the y intercept so let us understand you know the further simplified version of residuals is nothing but observed value minus let us substitute this predicted value by mx plus c and you will end up getting the equation which is residual is equal to observed value minus in bracket mx plus c so with the help of this equation calculation formula we are going to understand how practically one can calculate the residuals and for that let me bring the excel sheet on the screen and let us understand that concentration is in terms of ppm and then there is a area right there is a peak area for the 
linearity study. So let us assume that the concentration is 10.1 ppm, your first level. The second level is 20.2 ppm. Third level is 30.1 ppm. Then the fourth level is 39.8 ppm. And the last one is 50.5 ppm. I'm just taking the random values. Let us assume that the area observed for the 10.1 ppm concentration level is let us say 1000 right 1000 for the second concentration it is roughly uh, 2000 and let us say 5 for the third one it is 3020 for third it is 4055 and for last one it is 5000. So these are the areas. So which one, uh, what is the residuals now? The residuals is, let me calculate the residuals. And the residuals is what the observed value minus the predicted value. So for calculation of the predicted value, we need to calculate the slope, right? We need to calculate the slope and y-intercept, okay? So let us calculate slope quickly with the help of Excel functions. And here is the function for slope, right? The y is what? Is the independent values. And what is the independent values? Concentration is the independent values. And x is what? Uh, sorry, I, I made the mistake. So in case of y, it is the uh, it is the dependent values. Y is the dependent values. And we know that the area is dependent on to someone that is the concentration. So area becomes dependent value and X becomes the independent value, which is the concentration. So this is the slope 100.055. And let us calculate the Y intercept. Okay, the intercept. So again, Y is the dependent value. So area is always dependent on to the concentration so x becomes the concentration and here is the y intercept so we got the required values now so residuals is what the observed value okay what is the observed value is the area 100 1000 in this case minus mx plus c what is the m m stands for the slope m stands for the slope and into x stands for the uh, dependent value that is the concentration in this case plus plus the intercept is nothing but shear and shear is the dv the residuals right residuals for first point that is minus 10.8949 so this is the deviation in the area observed for the first level that is l1 so we will say <coughs> this l1 linearity level 2 l3 then l3 l4 and then l5 so let us do a small rearrangement that what are the constant values over here right this f6 is going to change but the slope value is going to remain constant throughout all so let us put this dollar symbol across this and similarly uh, the y intercept is also going to remain the same and I have put the dollar symbol across it. So just drag it and you will get the residuals for all these five levels, right? The next is what? Uh, the residual sum of the squares. So you need to first, first calculate the square, residual square, residual square. And how to calculate that? Okay, you have to just put sign is equal to add this into again this right same the same uh, row and you will get the square of that so this is the square of the residuals and then finally the sum of res uh, residual sum of squares so residual sum of square okay and share is the summation just, just do the summation of all the uh, residual squares and you will get the value for a residual sum of squares so this is the value that you was looking for right for calculation of estimation of one of your linearity parameter so if you look at the 
uh, residuals, you know, the summation of all the residual values will always will always be zero. Will always be zero. To be sum, if you add this, you will end up getting the zero value, right? The, this is the uh, the property of the residuals, and that is what you know. The regression line is drawn in such a way that the distance. The distance, the difference between the distance from each point will be as low as possible. So the summation of residuals is always should be close to zero. So you got the residuals, then the square of the residuals, and then the residual sum of the squares. So I hope that you now must be very clear about calculation of residual sum of square during the linearity study. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will meet you soon with such kind of useful and informative videos. Till then, take care and bye-bye.